Otto in Nice, France, which is very close to my oldest son Lon's house in Mujan, which is a lovely town about 20 minutes outside of Nice. They're on the Mediterranean and you know, if you look at how Nice is spelt, it's spelt nice and it's nice out there. Okay. Uh, hey, Paul, I once read somewhere that we cannot hear lower tones than the size the space permits. The longest distance in my living room is the diagonal from a corner at the floor to the diagonally opposed corner at the ceiling. I've calculated this distance to be 8.25 meters or 27 feet. That's a good size room. This wavelength corresponds to a frequency of about 40 hertz. If the above statement is correct, I will not be able to hear tones lower than that, but maybe it's not right. Well, it is right in many respects, but bass is complicated. We can have quarter tones, we can have half tones, we have standing waves, we have um, peaks and dips and resonances and Yes, in general, you know, the, these 27 foot long waves bunch up in the room. And so we don't hear them properly in the room unless you're in a very big room. And then you have a whole nother problem because now you can't, you can't get enough pressure, you know, to get the bass correct. So bass is a really big deal and it's, it's hard. And I would not pay a whole lot of attention to all this math stuff because there are simpler solutions. If you want to hear 20 hertz in your room, you know you have a problem, and much of that problem can be mitigated by proximity. So consider this. When we, as a manufacturer of speakers and electronics, measure a loudspeaker's performance, how is it that we tell our speaker goes down to, well, the Aspens go to like 30 hertz, right? And some of them go down to 27 hertz. How do we do that? Do we just have a giant room? No. We stick a microphone very close. So that's called a near field measurement. And you can tell that near field, you have a full range and it's totally legit. Now we could do it outside, we could do it inside, but near field is flat. And it doesn't take the room into account. Why does that matter? Well, it shows you that proximity to the subwoofer or your main speakers really matters. And we're gonna focus for a moment on subs because you know my passion for subwoofers. Every decent system out there ought to have a sub, right? Seriously. Now, my friend Darren, who designs a lot of our circuits, Darren Myers, um, you know, who has since moved on, sadly, but he's still in town, and, and Darren and I have lunch every week. Uh, I love the guy. So anyway, he has what I call near field woofers set up, right? And what does that mean? Well, here he is in his listening position, speakers out here, and he's listening. There's a subwoofer, like, right behind on, in one of his areas, here and here by the couch. I mean, within inches of Darren. Does he get 20 hertz? Hell yes. If you're walking around the room, do you get it? Nope, fairly small room. So there's all kinds of things you can do with placement and you don't have to place them next to you. Uh, this is just an example. You can, you can get 20 hertz performance by moving the sub around relative to your uh, listening position, more of which, you know, we'll go through over time. But yeah, so it, don't get so wrapped up in all this physics stuff because there's plenty of ways to circumvent what happens with bass in your room as long as you're willing to go the route of a subwoofer. Okay? All right. Hope that helps. Out there in sunny France, take it easy. Mm -hmm.